very important words up in there, and I really want you to take heed to them. Uh, the Lord is so good, and he knows what we need. And a lot of times, uh, it's not what everybody else has to say. It's what God has to say. Amen. It really is. And I'm going to start uh I'm going to start at the seventh verse. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to try not to read it all. Amen. But there's such, this, read, take the time when you get home and read the chapter. Uh, there is, I could read the whole chapter, tell the truth, and it would still have such a potency. Um, but at the seventh verse, therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, Surely because my flock, hear what it says, mm -hmm. because my flock became a prey and my flock became what? meat yeah. to every beast of the field, because there was what? No shepherd. shepherd. Neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves. Mm. And fed not my flock. Now, that's not to say, we're just talking about in general. Therefore, O ye shepherds, it gets real technical now. It, it says, Hear ye. Mm -hmm. Hear who? The Lord. the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. 10 verse. God, behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. All right. He comes seeking for us. When we're so lost that we don't know how to get where we need to be, he comes seeking. Sometimes the, the saints or the people of God are not doing their job. So he said, I will search for them. Have them scattered where? In the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people mm -hmm. and gather them from the countries mm -hmm. and will bring them to their own land and feed upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in, the all, and, and in all the inhabited places of the country. And I will feed them in a good pasture and both the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture. Shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Now this is when the Lord began to tell you what he's going to do for you. You have been in the hands of the devil. You have been in the hands of someone that didn't care. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. All right. And will bind up that which was broken. He's talking to us now. Yes. And I will strengthen that which was what? Sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and I will feed them with judgment. All right. And as for you, O oh my flock. Now you got to ask yourself, am I part of this flock? Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle. Honey, there comes a time where even though you look like the people of God and you're in the midst of the people of God, uh -huh. he began to pick out which was really cattle to him. All right, all right. Between the rams and the he goats. He really get ready to search through and pick out the ones that he really wants. See, some people just ride in the midst of God's people. But there's a time God ain't going to have no freeloaders. All right. I know. Mm -hmm. Yep, Lord Jesus. Somebody said he wants to save everybody. He do. He will save them that want to be saved. Amen. Amen. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. And you have drunken, drunk of the deep waters, but ye must fall foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat, and that which ye have trodden, 
with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. All right. Sometimes even he don't like you being hungry. Somebody's fat because they get to the table first. Yeah. Another one's lean because they don't know whether they, they picky eaters. But there comes a time you're going to have to figure out, I need what's on the table. I need every bit of it. Yes. I don't know where I'm going, but I need what's on the table. If God is setting the table, don't, let, don't, don't go to the table saying, I want this, but I don't want that. That's right. Because you don't know how far you're going. You don't know how far you're going to have to uh, deal with some things. There's some trials or anything, and there's some that are short. There's some things you're going to need some weight on you so that if you do lose, you won't lose it all. Because you have thrust with side, because you have thrust with side and with shoulder, and push all the disease with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock. And they shall no more be a prey. I want you to, you need to mark, I will no more be a prey. All right. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up, he done said it again now. I'm going to judge. I'm going I'm going to judge between cattle and cattle. That means he's going to make a difference. There, there's a, there's a, there is a shifting in the gears in this day and time. You need to know that everybody is not going to be in this last plan. Everybody's not going to be in this last move. Everybody's not going to work like like they have. Because see, some, now, uh, for years, we have allowed a lot of people. The real job, I, know I want it up. I don't want that. The real job is that these that are here must be able to hear God. He's getting ready to do something in this hour that must be done. See, and he's not going to get people that only have to hear from somebody else before they move. He's not going to get somebody else that, uh, before they can do anything, they got to say, is this God? I ain't never heard him talk to me like this. I know what. The first thing you need to know, I know, I'll give you an illustration. There's not a person, if you don't have a chance to know your mother, don't know when your mother's talking. You don't understand? I think it was God. No, they're not a person that don't have to, have to take the time to think whether their mother is talking. They know their mother's voice. Amen. It should be something you have to ponder and guess. You should know that voice is distinctive because you don't grew up with it. You don't even have to see it. You don't even have to be able to, you know the voice. I know my father's voice. If he came in here and started talking now, he's going to glory, hallelujah. But I know his voice. I know my sister's voice. How many hear me? The people you really know, you know their voice. That's right. Now, then how can God deal with you as an instrument against wickedness if you can't hear his voice? Because he needs to separate them that can. You know, they need somebody else to blow the trumpet before they can move. They need to hear a certain kind of sound. But there comes a time where God is not talking to them, but those that can hear. He gives them an illustration. Uh -huh. He talks to a servant, but and he tells. Now, I can give you this as an illustration. But, uh, the Lord would speak to Moses, and then Moses would get that. Now, I want you to sound the alarm for the people together. But Moses didn't get a sound of a horn. He got a call from God. And that's the difference between one to the other. Mm -hmm. this, this is where you begin to know who's in charge, whether there's somebody leading you, whether you got rank enough to lead somebody. You get different instructions. You move in your process differently. A lot of people, they just want to hear what everybody else hears. Amen. But there time, comes a time you need to hear from God. You really need to hear from God. Even my servant David. I'm, I got to read this. Therefore will I save my flock and they shall, I'm in the 22nd verse. No more be a prey and I will judge between cattle to cattle. And I will set up, what? One, One shepherd. shepherd over them. And he shall 
feed them. Even my servant David talked about Jesus. This was really a prophetic utterance of who Jesus was and what he was going to do. He shall feed them. He shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of what? Peace. And will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell how? Safely. In what? The wilderness. I don't care if it's dry as a bone and other folks can't live there. You can live there because he's going to keep you safely. All right. Thank you, Lord. And sleep where? In the woods. That means the trouble going to be so bad that other folks don't find no comfort in the woods. But because, now, there come, the Bible says there's coming a time where God begin to move with woes in the land. And you need to know, I'm so led of God, I hear God so, that even if I have to run out of my house, God will keep me safe. All right. If I have to go to some bad territory, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be a prank because he's already promised me he's going to be there even in the woods. Amen. I don't care where I gotta go. He, he, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. In the midst of the uh, the den of, of the lions and the ferocious folks, he's not counting on my ability. He's saying what he's gonna do when trouble come. Mm -hmm. See, there's some trouble should never touch you like it touch other folks. My Lord. When the world is crying, what are we gonna do? You ought to be resting in the arms of the Lord and say, He's already promised I'm not gonna be a prey. You may be a prey. Germ warfare, but the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He's there. He's going to protect me. Hallelujah. If I don't have a gas mask, he's going to be the gas mask. If I don't have a fire shelter, he's going to be the shelter. Yes, Lord. All right. If the storm comes and take everybody's house, it's not going to take mine. All right. I prove God for myself. I ain't waiting until the, the bad time come. When the storms come in the land, and I know it's really getting ready to wreak havoc. You know, when Sandy came through? You know, it went right through New Jersey. I got a house in New Jersey. My grandma's house that we came up in. I have a house there, and I'm over in Delaware. Sandy going up the coast. I said, Lord, you see my house over there? I don't want a window broken, no siding falling off, nothing. I don't want the basement flooded. Y'all say, she's silly. No, uh uh. Uh uh. Honey, I didn't have nothing like that happen to my house. And folks was flooded, had, they were new houses. Mine's an old house. Their basements were flooding and they had all kinds of having to get other folks to get the pumps to get it out. But you see, well, I, I remember what the Lord did for Egypt. Amen. And I said, Lord, I'm your servant. I can't, I can't help the house, but you can. Amen. When I used to go to houses that was roach infested while I was traveling hard all over the country, and I had to put my clothes out in those houses, you know what I did, Pastor? I said, okay, you roaches might get in here now, but when I get ready to leave, you want to stay here. Because that, that is a pestilence. I'm not taking them back to my house. This is what you have to deal with. This is your curse, not mine. I don't have no roaches at my house. So I'm going to leave your riches right here with you. Amen. I don't care where they get off. I don't care where they get off in the plane or in transport. But when I get to my house, not one of them dead roaches, not one of them bad boys going to go and set some eggs up in my house. And I did it for years. And, and, and the people say, yeah, we, we got a bad roach. I didn't take my clothes and shake them out and refuse to take my bag. I took my bag like I always do, right on in my house. Cause I knew I'd already prayed the prayer. You want to get to the place that you're not just saying prayers and then you don't believe what you're saying. That's right. Amen. 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 My Lord. 
if he didn't let the frogs take over the Egypt, uh, the Israelites' house. He's the same God. See, I apply what I learned from the scriptures to my de to daily life today. All right. See, he said, I will not be a prey. So maybe you live right next to me and I'm in the projects or whatever. Uh -oh. You can have all that mess because I'm going to bind it up so it can't come in mind. Right. Now, if y'all believe, you, like, you know, everybody got to be here. Well, you don't have to have them. You don't want to go into church. Maybe they're not going to church. But if you believe you got to have them, you're going to have them just because you're there. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's what you believe. My Lord. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. Amen. Jesus. You see, you got to begin to deal with what you got to deal with. Jesus, thank you. And our faith, the Bible said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can't get nothing from God when you don't believe God will take care of your personal business when you're taking care of his personal business. Oh, See, I'm on assignment. So I can tell Lord, Lord, I'm working for you now. I, you know I don't have no roaches in my house. I ain't got time for the rats that some of them got in their house. All right. I've been in houses, they were so bad, until when the water was run from my bath, I had to get in the bathtub and get out because they thought it was food coming down in there. I've been in, in houses that the roaches were so bad until I had to cover my plate because they were diving out of the ceiling and all yes. that kind of stuff. I've been in that kind of I stuff. That's what you're talking about. Yes. yes. I said, you, were, you had to stay with people that had that kind of roach oh, oh. fish? Yes. I didn't say nothing about it. I said, hallelujah, Lord, you're going to help me. I went on and preached. Kept right on preaching. I said, that's why, honey, God sent you and not me. Well, maybe you call you too. You too stubborn. You won't bow. You won't do. See, when you start sacrificing, when you start saying, I'll go, you know, matter what you send me, where you send me, you won't be put through the test. Can you deal with whatever is have to be done? See, some of us, we're too proud to go where God really want to take us. Because some things, you're not going to have power to get out of other folks if you can't get the power, the stuff out of the way from you that bother you. Amen. Amen. Because there's some things that really bother me. I didn't grow up with roaches. I didn't grow up with rats. I didn't grow up with with uh, things flying around my head when I'm preaching. Mm. Mm. But I done been where bats were flying around because the only candle was the one right there at my table. Mm. And you know what? When I made altar call, it was so full. And the bats were still flying around. And I just said, Lord, you... I'm going to preach a word. And I'm going to forget about these bats flying around near my head. Just don't let them land. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How many understand what I'm saying? Oh, See, that you, your phobias, your fears that you don't like, you have to put them on the line. Lord, you deal with this. I'm yours, Lord. See, we will say that, but then we're going we're gonna to still say, no, like, you don't take this away. I ain't going to preach. Uh -huh. No, preach. And let God deal with your phobia. God really wants you to do. That's so right. you got to get to the place. This is not going to bother me. I'm going to do what thus saith the Lord. Because he said he's going to keep me in peace. Yes. He's going to take care of the prey or the stuff that would hinder me from delivering his word. See, uh, you got to get to the place. I am what God say I am. I'm his vessel. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If it's a bat flying over my head, it's not going to prosper. If it's a big spider that I don't want coming down while I'm preaching, I'm going to keep on preaching and tell that spider to go wherever you want to go, but you ain't going to bother me today. got to get over your phobias. Do I like it? No, I don't like those kind of situations. But I ain't got time to stop when I'm already on my assignment. All right. Amen? Amen. Amen. 26 verse says, and I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. Look at that. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. My Lord. Look what he said here. There shall be showers of blessing. Praise Jesus. That means God getting ready to do what he said he would do. Yes. You ain't bothered by what's going on. Hallelujah. Honey, yes, you got you done dealt with the pestilence. You done dealt with the things you don't like. But God said, I know I'm gonna bless you. There shall be. You done took care of my business. I'm gonna take care of yours. There shall be showers 
a blessing. You run for me. You work for me. You talk for me. You live for me. You invite the people. If they don't come, you have done your job. Jesus. See, it ain't no problem if they don't come, but make sure you're not the problem. All right. Amen. Amen. But when you do what God said, the Lord, after a while, you're going to start checking up now. God, I'm inviting them and they ain't following. What's wrong with me? Because, right. honey, witnesses got power. Yes. They got power to influence. They got power to exercise. They got power to cause people to come out of where they are. That's why you ain't never seen a prosecutor anywhere that will put a witness up on the stand and he can't influence the folks. You ain't, you're not even going to find a defendant that can put up folks to testify for the one they're defending and they can influence them that they're not guilty. They put up people that they know have something to say. All right. Now, you need to make sure you're not telling everybody else's testimony when you try to witness and sometimes tell what God done for you. Yes. Because, see, sometimes we get to tell, and I know God did this for such and such, and I know God did this for such and such. But the one that's going to really make them in, uh, understand you know what you're talking about when you start saying, I know. Yes. That's what makes the difference. I know. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. Amen. I live in a, a, a row house. Some of y'all know what rural houses are. It, it really is a, a condominium, you know, and, and they, they're hooked together. And I just moved there. And of course, it had, we had some bad rain. Now, because I pray this prayer all the time, I'm in the middle of the one on the end and the one next to me. Uh -oh. <laughs> they come knocking on my door. My basement is full of water all the way up to the windows. My next door neighbor on the other side. My, my house is filled with water all the way up to the basement. They said, do you have any water? I said, I don't think so. Because theirs was filled with water on both sides and we're connected. They just knew mine was too. So I went down and I said, well, let me go look. Mine's dry as a power cake. I said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You are so good and you're so mighty, though I'm connected to this one that's full and that one. I'm not talking about water up to here, because the basement was that where it was up over the head. The water had not filled that much to the windows. See, God is not the kind of God that don't know how to take care of his children, even when they're not asking him. Well, because I don't ask in previous time, God, you take care of my stuff. All right. I work for you. I live for you. Honey, he knows how to help you more than you know how to help yourself. You need God to work for you when you don't want to sleep. Amen. How many understand what I'm saying? See, sometimes you don't have time to say, now, Lord, I don't need no flooding in my basement. So you need God to work for you. He said, I'll be with you when you sleep, and I'll be, because the Bible says the Lord neither slumbers nor sleep. He don't always need me to say, now God, get on your job. Because if I'm always doing what he want me to do, he's going to always be doing what he's supposed to do. All right. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. See, uh, sometimes y'all y'all find out God is doing some things for you, and you say, my God, God's really blessing me. That's when you start finding out the benefits of being obedient to him. Amen. You don't have to ask him for everything. You don't have to go around seeking him for everything. You have to say, Lord, you know, I really would like such and such. Because, see, some of y'all only believe God supplies just what you want, I mean, or your needs. Uh -huh. But the car uh, that I drove down, I didn't ask God for it. Already had a car. Some of y'all remember the Subaru? Yes. Subaru. I, I drove that Subaru. And while I'm driving, I almost, I'm at the end of paying that car off. Yes. Here comes a prophet coming forth saying, God said, you're getting ready to go through the land like fire. And then Tommy got ready to say that. He said, and I see, I hear God saying, and you're going to get the car you want. I hadn't even asked God for a car because I already had one. I was paying it off. 
And guess what God did? And the prophet kept on prophesying. He, he started prophesying about the ministry and immediately jumped back to the car. He said, God said you're going to get the car. You want And he kept saying it so. I only had looked at that car one time when they were on that there singing, singing inspiration, that one that where uh, they have all uh, Sunday best. Sunday best. Mm. <laughs> and they showed the car that they won't give it to whoever won. Right. That's the only time I saw that car. Mm. Had not really paid any that car any attention nowhere. Didn't see it nowhere, did not go looking for it nowhere. It just came across my mind. I think I might like that. That's all. I didn't ask God for it, God hadn't seen it. And I'm one of the ones, I like to see what I'm gonna buy. But all I saw was a, you know how the commercials are? Mm -hmm. Fast and a hurt. It was a whole year later. I said it in my mind. That's why I know nobody heard it but God. So when the prophet started prophesying, that was the only car. Because I don't go around looking for cars. If I got a car going working, if it's working, ain't nothing going on with it. And my, my super road was nothing wrong with it. Snowstorm come, I'm driving when nobody else can drive. I can ride and get down the road. Them super roads know how to deal with snow like nothing else. That's true. They go up any kind of hills, they can go deal. When tractor and trailers get stuck, they can still get you through. They're the, they're in the bad country, that's what they have. Nothing but super rules. Ain't nobody trying to mess with these other little cars that say four wheel drive, because they don't have all the wheels symmetrically movable and able to deal with the snow. That's true. Only Audi and Subaru got them kind of cars. So we get the other one. I remember my husband said, what made you get that one? Ain't nobody in town got no Subaru. I said, I got it because I know what I got. All right, look at this. But the Lord said he's going to give me that one. I said, well, I'm at the end of my payment. I ain't even trying to get no car now. Well, God didn't stop. Y'all need to understand, God knows your heart better than you do. God wants to bless you, not because you ask. God wants to bless you just because you've been obedient. You've been faithful to come to church. You've been faithful to doing things that other folks won't do. You need to let God have that. You stay in the race when other folks won't stay in the race. You help when other folks won't help. You make yourself available for God when other folks don't know how. God loves you that much. Can anybody help me say yes? yes. Amen. When I went to go and get that car, it did not take no long time for me to get it. I had to ask that because I guess I wasn't moving fast enough to get the, the, uh, the car that I wanted. I wasn't moving fast enough. And I, I came down to preach in South Carolina. Had five minutes away from where I had to preach. Got in such a bad accident. And since I was five minutes away, car turned around, hit two or three times on the medians. I was, you know, going down on 85, dated down into uh, Spartanburg. Mm -hmm. Honey, it was 12 o'clock traffic. And I hid in all that traffic behind me. But God, because he had a plan to get me in the car, he already prophesied. Hallelujah, I hit and I said it, and the people started running from everywhere, trying to see whether I was hurt. I'm the only thing on my mind, I got to go preach. It wasn't about the car. It wasn't about what, what kind of, act, how the car looked. Uh -huh. I told him one that I said, do it look like it arrived? He said, yes. I said, see you. He said, you don't want to look like, see you. I'm five minutes away from where I got to preach. I'm supposed to be there, 12 o'clock day. I got to be there. I took off. I was a little sore, you know, the car looking raggedy. By the time I got ready to pull up there, I was going, the people jumped out. And, Oh, Pastor. Don't worry about it. Five minutes. I need five minutes. Just need five minutes with the Lord. <laughs> it's not the car now I'm concerned about. It's the people of God. Amen. See, you're going to have to prioritize who's important. It's not the car. My Lord. I need God to give an answer for all these people that don't come to hear a word from God. Mm -hmm. I said, it's going to be all right. They said, Oh, you're right. I said, I got a little sore. I mean, it was, it was a bad thing. But as soon as I began to go under the anointing, 
I know my help come when I start preaching. All right. It never fails. I don't care whether I'm sore. I don't care how far and how much I'm sore. I don't care how what I feel in my body. It doesn't. It doesn't. Just don't matter. I'm not saying you should have listened. Yo, that's all. That's what you need to do. That is not what I need to do. When I'm on assignment, I'm going to do what I have to do. And you know what? Because I obeyed God, everybody's like, oh, we can go take you. No, you can't take me because I know what's getting ready to happen. God's getting ready to show out in this place. Mm -hmm. Honey, God began to, the word began to come like fire. And people, the, uh, the, the preachers that were there, they said, I know all these people. And you know, went down the line of everyone that's here. They had needs where their homes were tearing up. And young people and old. And they had problems where their marriages were breaking up. And everything was going raggedy. And it was, I said, God. And the God began to heal immediately. People are crying and weeping. And God just loosed the people. Thank you, Jesus. But the word had already come, I'm going to get a car. I drove that same car all the way back from South Carolina. For that. And I said, just, just make sure that the lights work so I can go on down the road. They put that, done that, and honey, I drove the car. And I, I didn't even take it in time. I got in it from South Carolina to the up north. I've been driving, I've been driving the regular speed. But I said, ooh, no, he's dangerous. No God is a good God. All right. I waited two days. My husband didn't even see the car. When he did see it, he was like, ah! <laughs> he was flabbergasted. He said, you that? I said, because all you're going to do is worry, and I ain't got time for that. I done got healed. I done got delivered, and that, the car is banged up. It ain't me banged up now, because I got anointed. And once I get anointed, I get healed. All right. So it ain't me. It's the car. I ain't worried about that car. I'm just so sure they're going to fix my green suit. I went in and they oh. said, total. Total. I said, what? I done drove all the way back. Total. Had to go get the car now. He'll fight your battles. Yes, he will. He will not leave you without. He knows if you're taking care of his business, he won't leave you without. He'll make a way when you say, God, I still got this payment. That, they paid that one on off, and God went on and I got another one with whatever else was left. God knows how to fix things. You are trying to figure it out, but God don't have no problem working out what he need to work out for you. He's not lost. He's, he's not like these people that don't know where the money's come from. I had no idea how to pay for that car that I got because I never made a payment like I was going to make. But when I was sitting at the table,